Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Yao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamapa and homage to Master Dupton Torji. Homage to the Three Jewels of the Altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today. Namo Sakyamuni Buddha's emanation, Kala Chakra Buddha, and the youthful goddess, Sumo, Tanzan Kato, Tutan City. All Dharma Masters, Dharma Educators, Dharma Teachers, Dharma Lecturers, Dharma, Dharma Teachers, Dharma Lecturers, Dharma Assistants, Disciples present here and over the internet. How do you do? Good afternoon. Hello. 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 Konnichiwa. For next Sunday, November twenty ninth. At 3 p.m. At the Rainbow Temple, there will be Manuhara Homa Fire Offering Ceremony. Manuhara, the wealth attracting goddess. Manoharia Homa And this deity has uh, created lots of miracles and has hooked down lots of riches. If you don't want any of the riches, then you don't have to become primary supplicants. Today, we perform Kala Chakra Homa. It's a very special occasion. As we all know, Kala Chakra was an emanation of Sakyamuni Buddha. Sakyamuni Buddha uh, at the vulture's peak, giving Dharma teaching, uh, 
he split the, his body and went to India to the auspicious Miji Pagoda in the South India when in the Grahakuta and there was the Kalachakra King so Sakyamuni Buddha transformed himself to become a Kalachakra and the youthful goddess. And transmitted the Kalachakra Dharma to the King Dujaya of Shambhala. At that time, the King Dujaya spread the Kalachakra Dharma practice all over Shambhala, Buddha land. That's the origin of the Kalachakra practice. So Sakyamuni Buddha transformed to become Kalachakra Buddha. And Sakyamuni Buddha transmitted the Kalachakra practice to King Dujaya and the King spread the Kalachakra Tantra or Dharma practice all over Shambhala Buddha land, Shambhala kingdom. And then later on at Kashmir, the Kalachakra practice was widespread in Kashmir. That's the origin of the Kalachakra Dharma practice. And Kalachakra talked about three wheels. One is the inner wheel, next is the outer wheel, and the, the last one is the special wheel. And in the year of 2000, in Hong Kong, for the first time, I transmitted the Kalachakra Tantric Dharma. At that time, before that, there was no, no one Chinese-speaking person who had ever transmitted Kalachakra before then, so I was the first one, the first Chinese speaker who transmitted Kalachakra Dharma. And afterwards, Master Tupten Torji instructed me to transmit the Kalachakra Dharma across the five continents. So I conducted Kalachakra ceremonies in Asia, Europe, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, Australia, and many countries. I transmitted the Kalachakra. And today, we perform Kalachakra Homa. 
So this is a very rare and remarkable occasion. It seems that the True Buddha Foundation has requested Master Lian He to write a report on Kala Chakra. Has, have you all seen it? Master Lian He from Brazil. That he has written a Kala Chakra complete report. Have you seen? During the Master's meeting, everyone has one. So then all the Masters should have read it. Anyone? Yan 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 Xi. Yan Yin. Anybody that has seen the cover of the book, please raise your hand. So the content, of course, includes the origin of the Kala Chakra and the, the source and also all the Kala Chakra Dharma that I have uh, transmitted were included in the book. So if you have not read it, please do. You have to read it. That's very precious. A very precious uh, Dharma book. <laughs> That was the end. Her. <laughs> How could you not read it? Uh, the Dharma teachers don't have it. You should have printed as a book. It includes uh, the Master's uh, Dharma teachings and all the archaeological uh, discoveries and findings. It all complies with the history and the records. The so called Kala Chakra or the Wheel of Time. That time is a huge or great wheel. Think about it. A human being from birth to death that's the turn of the wheel of time. You live amidst time. You're not separate from time. Life and death are all under the control of time. It can uh, be born or die. So the meaning of the wheel of time is that it 
includes both life and death. The meaning is very expansive. That uh, amidst the wheel of time, everything can be born or everything can be destroyed. Once you learn the Kala Chakra Dharma, then you would know how to use your own wheel of time together with the outer of wheel of time to transform into the special wheel of time. When you reach the special wheel of time, then you can be separate from time, you can abandon time, then only then you would enter nirvana, only then you would have attainment, only then you would be a Buddha. That's extremely important. Kala Chakra is extremely important. I hope that after your research on the Kala Chakra Dharma, you, all of you, would have attainments. Before the Dharma teaching, I would like to start with a joke. At the last uh, bus, the last ride of the bus, it was being stopped by bandits and being driven into the mountain. And they showed their guns and said, uh, this is a robbery, and we want money and and people. So show all your uh, all your money and riches on your hands, and then we'll get them all. And then the bandits were toward the end, and there was a grandma that was uh, taking off her clothes. And the bandit said, what are you doing? And the grandma was calm and replied, I have no money to give you. But if you want sex, I'll give it to you. <laughs> It should be like this. If you want money, I have none. If you want sex, I have none. No need to take off your clothes in panic. As a human being, we should know ourselves well. You have to understand yourself first. So, I want to ask everyone, how much have you, how much Buddha Dharma have you understood? Many of us, after so many years, you have to understand yourself first and to know how much Buddha Dharma you have understood and give a score to yourself. You should know yourself. How much Buddha Dharma have you mastered? Are you qualified? 
to be an Acharya, weigh yourself. Are you qualified to be a Dharma teacher? Weigh yourself. Are you qualified to be an Upasaka, a male lay practitioner? Are you qualified to be an Upasaki, a female lay practitioner? So reflect upon yourself. Now, we will do the question and answer from Malaysia in Hua Huang Fulong. Homage to Grandmaster. Once in 1990, Grandmaster went to Johor Bahru in Malaysia and transmitted the Dharma practices of facing the Sun Wisdom and the Great Sun Wisdom. I would like to ask, in Facing the Sun Wisdom Dharma Practice, in the book you wrote that the time to practice this is when the sun has risen three feet. Does it mean it is between 9 and 11 a.m. or between 8 to 9 a.m.? How many deep breaths is considered as one set of practice? Do we need the treasure-based energy yoga? After the practice, which Taoist mantra should we chant? Is it the sun dispersing the sunshine, light, dappling purple and blue? So the Facing the Sun Wisdom Dharma Practice. And the other one is the Great Sun Wisdom Dharma Practice. You have to practice three times a day. If my time is constrained, can I just practice once a day in the morning? How many breaths is considered as one set of practice? Do I use complete deep breathing or treasure with energy? The Great Sun Wisdom Dharma Practice and the amazing, amazing Light Dharma Practice or the accumulation light the Light Accumulation Dharma Practice in the book Shooting Stars and Red Maples. What are the differences? Do they produce the same end result? Does practicing the Great Sun Wisdom and facing the Sun Wisdom Dharma Practices provide us with the same function as armor protection? Regarding the Great Sun Wisdom Dharma practice and the Facing the Sun Wisdom Dharma practice was mentioned in Grandmaster's book number 98, The Mysterious Crusade of the Dharma Ocean on the article on taking refuge in the rainbow light of the great sun. This dharma practice is extremely secretive. It is a dharma of the oral tradition. It is the clandestine practice of the blue-green Padmakumara. Anyone constantly practicing this dharma will find liberation. It will be transmitted only to those engrossed in it. And this Dharma practice cannot uh, be done remotely. 
you have to request personally from the Lady Shud Guru. So the great son wisdom Dhamma practice is an oral tradition. Cannot be done with six ears. So Grandmaster has two ears and you have two ears, so only four ears. I cannot be spoken if there's an additional person. So all the same today, for the Great Sun Wisdom Dharma practice cannot be transmitted publicly. It's been mentioned in that book, The Mysterious Crusade of the Dharma Ocean. The Dharma cannot be spoken to six ears, so so it can only be done one on one, cannot be known to the third party. So if you want to learn the Great Sun Wisdom Dharma practice, come to the Seattle Temple and live here longer, stay longer. Stay longer. Then I will teach you all the practice. And facing the sun, wisdom dharma practice can its empowerment can be done remotely and to be practiced on the five constructive days. Do you know, in the lunar farmer's calendar, there's the lunar calendar in there, and in Hong Kong, they called it it's a Chinese word. When we say the name is book, but it sounds like losing, but Hong Kong people don't want to lose. They like to gamble. They love money. They play mahjong at the restaurants. They want to gamble. The Taiwanese call it the Tong Su Su meaning books, but it sounds like losing. So they in Hong Kong they change it to become a winning. They don't like to hear the sound of losing. And monks and nuns in Taiwan are very respected and people will join their palms. But the Hong Kong people would uh, say, oh, bad luck, bad luck, if they see monks and nuns. Because it's like bald, bald head, meaning like they lost everything. So the, the master who ordained me, the Venerable Guo Xian, he walked out from the elevator and the Hong Kong Hong Kongese said, Oh no, bad luck, bad luck. And so he reprimanded them that as an ordained monk or nun, we are the field of fortunes. You should be lucky to see ordained person, but the Hong Kong people don't believe that then they stop gambling on that day because they think that they would lose money. So this Dharma practice is to be practiced on the five constructive days. And what is the five constructive days? Then you open the farmer's calendar's book. Uh, there's elimination day, uh, receiving day, uh, perfect day, so constructive day, and it's like once every 12 days. 
Yet you practice this on the constructive day. By facing the sun when it reaches three to four feet high. At sunrise, when you see the run, the sun, that's the time. So when you see the sun just rising from your balcony, then that's the right time. It's not talking about the clock. Eleven is almost noon. This is at sunrise. So if you see, if the sun rises above the mountain, then where, whenever you start to see the sun rising, that's it. So at your home, whenever the sun just rises, that's the time. It is practice standing with the heart facing the sun, inhale and visualize the qi and sun rays enter and merge with the heart, hold the breath for three breaths and swallow the saliva three times. Now you know. When the sun just rises and you are looking at the rising sun, it's still red and it would not harm your eyes. You cannot stare straight into the sun if the sun is too bright because that would hurt or harm your eyes. You look just at the bottom of it and you visualize the sun rays merge with your heart. Visualize the chi that you inhale with complete breathing. So the chi and the sun rays together enter into your heart and you hold the breath for three breaths, three inhalations and exhalations. And then you swallow the saliva three times, three mouthfuls. Swallow three mouthfuls of saliva and they chant the mantra. The great sun diffuses its rays, dappling purple and blue-green light. Enter into my soul and shine upon my five elements. May the ghost brick fill the port. Make my mind calm and upright. Internally penetrate the nine qi. Externally reach the womb life. The flying sage of utmost purity, let the jade book of prophecy be determined, commanded. After the mantra recitation, hold, use the hand to wipe the eyes 14 times and tap the teeth 14 times. May all be auspicious. And check the lunar farmer's calendar for the five constructive days. Now you know. Hey, it have it must have been written in my books. You can practice this on any constructive day or Jian day. This is all very clear. You can ask for remote empowerment to do this Dharma practice of facing the sun wisdom. 
then your body will be purified, your body will be filled with young energy, and after practicing it for a long time, you can become a sage directly. <laughs> it's a joke. This is a Dharma practice of a mindfulness. It's a Taoist practice, the same as visualization in Tantrayana. You inhale the chi, merge with the sun rays, and to let it enter into your heart. Hold your breath for three breaths, and you can swallow saliva three times. So you swallow your saliva. Elderlies don't have saliva anymore. And only when you're young, you would have lots of saliva. Saliva is very important. Now I still do the practice of swallowing saliva. Really? If you cannot swallow saliva, you can close your eyes and think about the sour plum. It would make you salivate. That's called swallowing saliva. If there's no saliva, you cannot make that sound. This Dharma practice is extremely wonderful, and you can receive the empowerment through remote requests. It's very easy. You just do it on the constructive day. So if you know that tomorrow is a constructive day or Jian day, then you would uh, get up earlier and meet the rising sun. And then as it is rising, your eyes are gazing at the sun. And you can still gaze directly at the sun. The sun is still uh, not so piercing. And then you inhale all of its sun rays, sunshine, together with your chi. Store it in your heart. That's the practice for the pure young energy. And it can be practiced by women as well. After practicing for a long time, your whole body is filled with young energy. And Li Tong Ping was also called the Li Chun Yang, the pure Yang Li, because he had practiced until he became a complete pure Yang energy. It's a method to achieve sagehood through this Taoist practice.
and the great sun wisdom dharma practice cannot be cannot be done with the remote empowerment it has to be transmitted orally The Great Sun Wisdom Dharma Practice Next question by Gareth of England Gareth from England asked, Dear Grandmaster, on May 30th, you gave a teaching that when we chant Om Burulantali, we need to visualize Vajrapani Bodhisattva. Does it mean when that we need to obtain Vajrapani empowerment in order to do this armor protection as part of our daily practice? Bolulantali, you have to visualize Vajrapani Bodhisattva. In the past, when I chant Om Bolulantali, and I would form the mudra, touch the brow point, the throat, the heart, left shoulder, right shoulder, and then back to the brow point and then release the mudra. When you release the mudra, you visualize Vajapani Bodhisattva appearing right in front of you or behind you. Either way, because every spiritual cultivator, as Sakyamuni Buddha once said, he asked Sariputra, what do you see behind my back? And Sariputra said, I don't see anything behind Sakyamuni Buddha. And then Sakyamuni Buddha asked Vajrapani Bodhisattva to appear and asked Sariputra again, so what do you see behind at my back? And he replied, now I see Vajrapani Bodhisattva at your back. And then the Buddha said, every spiritual cultivator or sadaka, every Buddhist who practice Om Burulantadi, you are requesting Vajrapani Bodhisattva during the armor protection to protect you, then Vajrapani Bodhisattva will be at your back and protecting you at any moment. You don't chant Om Burulantadi only during Dharma practice. Do you know? Every day before you wear clothes, like you're on your underwear, you're in your underwear and you're about to dress up, and you place your hands, I mean, on your clothes, you place your clothes on your hands, and then you chant Om Burantari, and then you wear the clothes, that's armor protection. Then you would never be invaded by any spirits or ghosts. 
so you don't do Om Purantari only during Dharma practice. You do it before you go out. You do it on the clothes before you wear them. It's very effective. Borli means Rajapani. Lanzadi is to support and protect. So which means Vajapani Bodhisattva is protect you. So when we do armor protection as part of our Dharma practice, do we need empowerment for Vajapani? No need. But if you want uh, an empowerment, it's fine too. Pani means Vajapani Bodhisattva. Every tantrika, because we called Pony. That's good enough. Om Purnantri was taught to me by Master Pu Fang. You need to visualize Vajapani Bodhisattva. So, as you know, when we do our Dharma practice, we do Dharma protection and we chant the Om Buranjari. As you release the mudra, we have to visualize Vajapani Bodhisattva. But before I do any of that, they already continue. They continue to the next one, so I had no time to visualize anything. And Vajapani Bodhisattva, one hand is holding uh, Raja Scepter and the other one is Raja Lasso. And the legs are like a Mahabala, standing, one straight, one bent. So that's the leg posture of bow and arrow. You have to visualize clearly, but before I do that, they continued, so I didn't have enough time to visualize anything. Now it's better. They would s take a little pause after the releasing the mudra, and then they continue when they see Grandmaster. That Mark Grandmaster have joined his palms again, so they know now that you have to visualize. So that was a question by Gareth from England. Do you need a Vajapani empowerment? No need. Because you have received the empowerment for the Dharma practice, and the Japani is only part of it. So, if you don't chant his mantra, he would be invisible, but by chanting his mantra, he would appear. But if you want an empowerment, that's fine too. Because Vajapani Bodhisattva is one of the eight great Bodhisattvas. You can also have him as your Yidam too. He's one of the eight great Bodhisattvas. One of the eight great Bodhisattvas. 
but it's okay if you want to especially receive Vajrapani empowerment. And Vajrapani Bodhisattva has his own special mantra. Anybody knows? Nobody. Om Betta Boni Hom Hom Pe. That's the mantra of a Japani Bodhisattva. And when you chant Lanjali means protect me. Om Boni, which means Vajapani. Lanjali means protect me. And you can chant it when you go out or anytime, not just during a Dharma practice. Mom is very strict and she doesn't let us to go out at night. So I intentionally made my dad really angry and dad was chasing me out of the house and then so he could leave the house. We could leave the house. The kid went to the internet cafe and the dad went to the bar after leaving the house. So the mom is strict, but the dad and the kid want to go out and play. So the kid intentionally made the dad really angry and the dad was trying to beat the kid and chasing him out of the house and then the dad followed and left the house too. So when there's a rule, there's uh, a breaking the rule. I played golf with a 78-year-old man and he was sharing with me the wisdom of life all along. He's truly the most... Uh, we, I spent the most carefree uh, day then be myself and then afterwards I told him please don't speak to me at the parking lot because my wife is picking me up and she thought that I had been deaf for five years and the seven year old 78 year old man pretended to be deaf five years ago. So what benefit is there? Lots of them. You know, every time I give wedding blessings, I would ask the man, the grooms, uh, do your girlfriends love to talk? And if the man replies, the groom replies, Oh, my girlfriend doesn't like to speak. And I would say, 
Congratulations, that's a very rare, that you're very lucky. But if the man said that, oh, my girlfriend loves to talk, then I would hang my head. If you have such experience, please raise your hands. No need to ask the monks or the nuns. Most women love to talk. Talk a lot. Most women talk a lot. It's very important uh, to uh, to be quiet, to have a quiet environment. Grandmaster doesn't speak very much, only when I give them a teaching. I don't usually speak very much. Hmm, this is a little dirty, this joke. <laughs> it is the problem of the person who picked the joke, not mine. It's quite blue. Is it blue? Can I tell the joke? Someone, please stand up if you said it. <laughs> it's okay. She's really old already. <laughs> I'm too embarrassed to say, but... So, but they said that it's okay, so it's their problem. When the teacher was doing a rooster, there was a woman that's called F Seven Phoenix. And the teacher was very curious, why are you called this name? And she said, oh, because when my mom was giving birth to me, the phoenix crowed seven times. That's why I am called the seven phoenix. That's ridiculous, the teacher said. What if the rooster crowed eight times when you were born? That's why you cannot deduce from those things. Because for her, truly, the phoenix was crowed. Seven times. Now we will talk about uh, friction and path. <laughs> Not <laughs> the path is fruit, <laughs> but it is truly like this <laughs> in the excerpt. <laughs> Fruit and path, <laughs> not the path and its fruit. And the following is the instruction on the spiritual experiences of the outer-worldly path. It is divided into two kinds, fruit and path. The first one, fruit. The spiritual experience of the fruit, as in the verse, in quotes, if one merges with the palace of the Mahaprasna Paramita Buddha Mother, one will experience the Dhammakaya due to the liberation from the two attachments, end quote. 
This riff refers to when the mind qi is evenly absorbed into the quin essential a character at the lower left part of the left semen channel. One will be able to stop and cut what needs to be cut and discern the two attachments and attain the great bliss of Dharmakaya. So if one merges with the palace of the Mahaprasna Paramita Buddha Mother, the verse, if one merges with the palace of Maha Prasna Paramita Buddha Mother, one will experience the Dharmakaya due to the liberation from the two attachments, which is attachments to self or ego and attachments to everything. So attachments to self and attachments to Dharma or everything. When the mind chi is evenly absorbed, which is in meditation, into the quin essential A character at the lower left part of the left semen channel, one will be able to stop the two attachments, attachments to self and attachments to Dharma or everything, and one can attain the great bliss of Dharmakaya. That's what it meant. Prasna Paramita. Who can transmit the Prasna Paramita? Who is the guru of the ever weeping Bodhisattva? A great Bodhisattva, Xiang Hong, the Guru of the ever weeping Bodhisattva, a Xiang Hong Bodhisattva, could transmit the Prajna Paramita, is able to transmit Prajna Paramita. The ever weeping Bodhisattva. The Guru lived in the city of Xiangfeng, and the great Bodhisattva called the Xiangfeng Bodhisattva specializes in transmitting Prajna Paramita. So the Qi merges with the great palace of Prasna Paramita Buddha Mother. What does it mean? The palace of Maha Prasna Paramita Buddha Mother. One will experience the liberation from the two attachments, the Dharmakaya. Anybody can explain? If one merges with the palace of Maha Prasna Paramita Buddha Mother, anybody can explain this phrase? I will not explain. I'm not allowed to explain this part. I cannot tell you. I will keep the secret. This is a secret. By saying this, someone may guess and understand. Merging with the palace of Prajna Paramita Maha Buddha Mother. The Chi merges with the palace of Prajna Paramita Maha Buddha Mother. The left semen channel at the bottom of it, the Ah character, you would be able to stop the attachments to self and to Dharma and gain the great bliss of Dharmakaya. That's what it meant. 
but the palace of the Prasnaparamita Maha Buddha Mother. I cannot explain. Second, the path. The spiritual, the spiritual experience of the path, as in the verse, quote, by the lucid and light home, one generates the wisdom of infinite and immaculate space, end quote. It refers to when the mind qi is evenly absorbed into the home character of the dual execution, one gives rise to the meditation of self-arising wisdom. The mind is lucid, the body light, the immaculate space is analogy. This does not follow the stages, just let it be and maintain it. The above is the complete instructions on all the spiritual experiences of the initial accumulation period. That's the complete instruction. So, lucid and light home, what does it mean? Home, character or syllable, transform to become very lucid, light, immaculate. One generates the wisdom of infinite and immaculate space. The sky is an analogy. You self generate a wisdom that is immaculate. So, what kind of phenomena is this? This is when you are in meditation on the home of the dual execution. In meditation, you visualize home character that is completely immaculate, lucid, and light. You will self-generate the greatest kind of wisdom. And at this moment, the mind is completely lucid, immaculate, and the body feels light. And the immaculate space or sky is just an analogy. This is when you're in meditation. At the moment of dual execution, the home character can give rise to the self-generating wisdom. So this meditation is called the self-arising wisdom meditation. At this does not follow the stages. Just let it be and maintain it. And the above is the complete instructions on all the spiritual experiences of the initial accumulation period. I did not say it specifically about this too. When you're in meditation, and then you enter into Paramita, the palace of the great Buddha Mother. When you are in meditation, the arising Ah character of the semen channel at the lower tip the R ah character, this would allow you to cut, cut off the attachments to self and to everything, to Dharma. 
and the second when you meditate and enter into the palace of the Prajnaparamita Mahabuddha Mother, you visualize the home character to be extremely clear and lucid. You would generate to a kind of wisdom that's called the self-arising wisdom meditation. That's what it meant. There's a song. Xiang Thinking of you, you're uh, in the sky, thinking of you, you're in the brain, thinking of you, you're in the heart of feel, and then you merge, and you're just like the sky, immaculate. Once you merge, then you're like the sky, immaculate, free of any contamination, and the R character appears, then it will cut attachments to self and dharma. The home character appears. Then you would gain, you would attain the self arising wisdom meditation. But I will not uh, specify the palace of the Mahaprajna Paramita Buddha Mother. The rest is explained clearly. When I think of you, you at the border, I mean, the sky. When I think of you, you're right in front of my eyes. When I think of you, you're in my brain. When you think, when I think of you, you're in my heart. That's called one. When you're in dual execution, it would become zero. What is zero? Zero is the sky. At that time, what appears is no attachments to self, no attachments to anything, no contamination, you become lucid, you become immaculate sky. So when you're in union, that's one, and from one, you transform into zero. This is the realm of zero. Uh, our family wants a girl, so I'm pregnant again. And one day, the son uh, lay on my tummy and said, Mom, after you give birth to my little sister, can you please give birth to a little puppy for me? 
That's the kids talk of Mani Benihom.